All right, today we're going to show you how to cook garfish. Um, it's been brought to my attention that a lot of places, especially more up north, most people don't eat gar. If they catch them, they'll kill them and throw them back, which is a waste. Because garfish is a really, really, really good fish. It's probably one of my favorite. The meat is very mild, very white, extremely lean. Um, this is some up on the one that we showed you how to clean earlier. If it's a smaller gar, you can fry it like you would catfish. Just take a meat hammer and kind of tenderize it a little bit because it's got these kind of vein type things in it that you need to pull out. But um, for a large gar, and the gar here get extremely large, several hundred pounds, we make what we call gar boulettes, which is basically just a big meatball. And we'll, use, we'll cook it in kind of a roux gravy or we'll fry it up for like a hamburger patty. And it's really, really good. So we're going to show you today how to make garboulettes. You need a way to grind your meat. Electric meat grinder is the best, obviously, but since we do, we have a lot of uh, preppers following the video, we're going to do it as old-fashioned as we can. So we're using this old hand crank meat grinder. If you don't have access to these, and they're really not hard to find, you can order them or find them in a lot of hardware stores, and they're really not that expensive. But if you can't get one, um, you can take a spoon and just scrape this and this meat will fall apart. You basically just tear it apart with the spoon if you have to. Or you can use a food processor, but it's kind of difficult and you can ruin your meat with it because you don't want to pate it, which is what you're going to probably end up doing with a food processor. But um, if you're very careful and you just chop it a little bit, you can do it in a food processor if that's all you have access to. These little meat grinders are very good to have. They last pretty much forever as long as you clean them. There's nothing to them. It's basically a giant screw with a bolt on the end and it's just ripping the meat apart. It's really not even anything to keep sharp because the blades aren't sharp. It's kind of just tearing it up. And uh, This one I believe is for my grandmother so it's, a, it's worth it. I mean they're not really that expensive but still even so they last forever. And it doesn't take a lot of effort, like it's really not that strenuous of a chore. Don't stick your fingers in it like I'm doing. They make a little wooden peg for this. I just don't know where mine's at. Probably because I didn't even look for it. Because I was going to stick my fingers in it. Like you're not supposed to. See, we have a finger surprise. No surprises. <laughs> Okay, we're going to go ahead and chop up some onions, some bell pepper, some garlic. We've got some green onions fresh out the garden. Um, and we're going to season that up. Now, most of this is going to go in the pot when we make our gravy, but some of it we're going to put into the actual meatballs themselves. So we'll have little bits of seasoning onions and green onions and all this garlic, everything actually inside the meatballs as we make them. Um, I also want to show you that there's like skin and these little tenon kind of things in the gar meat. That's why we're grinding it up so that we can get that stuff out. You'll, so you'll have to notice, you know, in your grinder, you might have to pull some out and make sure that doesn't go into your meatballs because it, it won't break apart completely so that your meat is actually very loose and doesn't have any of that in it. Or just, if you're doing it um, in a food process or anything like that, you're just going to have to kind of go through it with your hand a little bit and make sure that none of these tenons are getting in there. And of course, how much of this you do um, depends on 
what you're doing, how you're cooking, who you're cooking for. But they do keep well in the freezer. So what you can do is you can just make a bunch however much you have if you catch a big gar. And you can make the meatballs. You can actually bake them in the oven to kind of get them firm a little bit and then put them in the freezer and they'll keep and you can cook them later. You can make burgers with them or this boulette gravy that we're making, whatever you want. So they keep pretty well in the freezer. So I tend to just go ahead and do a whole bunch at one time. the chocolate on me. Yeah. All right, we've got all of our meat all ground up and all of the little veins and tendons out. You can dig through it and check and make sure. There's two ways that this is normally done, kind of dependent on where you're from, which family you're from, or how you prefer it. One way to do it is basically like a regular meatball with breadcrumbs, eggs, seasonings, and then you throw your onions and all that in, spices and seasonings. Um, the other way to do it is with potato, which basically you're just taking your meat and you're making mashed potatoes and adding that to it kind of in place of the breadcrumbs and then your seasonings and your spices and all that. Um, it really doesn't matter either way, it's whichever one you prefer. The texture is slightly different if you do it with the potato, it's a little denser. The potato is more of a filler, it'll stretch it, it'll make a lot more, and it'll kind of mute the taste a little bit. Um, so it, you can make it both ways and try it and see whichever one you like. I prefer it with the breadcrumbs. It's easier and I prefer the taste and the texture that you get from it. So we're just starting with our ground up meat. I'm going to put two eggs in it. It doesn't take that much egg, not as much as like ground meat, the meatballs do. You can actually get away with doing this without egg, but it sticks together a little better if we put some egg. I'm going to put some of my seasonings, some onions, some garlic, some bell pepper, and some green onions. And then I'm going to save the rest for the gravy. Alright, now you want to season your meat. We use Tony's. You can find it in most places now, in most Walmarts or order it. But if you can't, just use seasonal. It's pretty much the same thing. It's just a blend of seasonings. salt for everything because it's a lot healthier and you don't have to do this if you don't want this is fine like it is um, but I'm gonna add a little homemade hot sauce into it some homemade volcano sauce yeah some melt your face off sauce mm -hmm. Ooh, watch out it's, out it's exploding and this is from the hot sauce video if you want to know how to make this go look up the hot sauce video but I'm not gonna put a whole lot a little bit of go a long way. Alright, so you see we've got all of our seasonings. And then we're going to put plain breadcrumbs. 
and it's going to take quite a bit because this stuff is really moist. it all together. I'm going to probably need more breadcrumbs yeah, after I mix it. So I'm going to mix all this together. I'm smelling it to see if it needs more seasonings. Be sushi if you taste it. <laughs> Gar is a really, really, really good meat. It's extremely mild. It's not very fishy. It's firm. I really like it. All right, put me some more breadcrumbs because I'm still all gooey. Say when. When. about half the container? Uh, yeah, about. Alright, okay. okay. I think this will be about enough. So we ended up with about half the container. Just kind of go by the feeling of it until it starts to kind of dry up and stick together. Because stick together. we're still a little loose, but there's still some at the bottom we're working. Because how much you make, I mean, and it could go by how big you're fish is, so it's going to be different every time, so just go by the feel of it, because this is all off of one fish. Most of you know, see, I just found some that some of that skin stuff. It's too tough to take that out. Uh, gar can get pretty big. I'll throw some pictures at the end of the video of different gars to show you how big they get. So there's a lot of meat on this fish. Alright, what do you think? That's firm enough? Or you think we should put a little more? Well, this it's enough to stick into a ball would be good. Put a little flour in my uh, hand. pan. Okay. We're going to roll these in flour because we're going to fry them in the pot um, and make a little bit of a roux gravy with it because it's a very lean white fish so it otherwise would make a very pale thin gravy. So. We're gonna uh, we're gonna make a root gravy with it. All right, flour you use. The flour part. And I'll pass them to you, and you can flour them. Up. We typically make them about that size. Bigger than a spaghetti meatball, a little smaller than a hamburger patty. Kind of flatten them out. And yeah, not completely round, we kind of <coughs> flatten them. Makes a boulet. That's why we call it gar boulets. Just French word for ball. It's like a meatball, gar ball. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and start frying them now and you want quite a bit of grease in the bottom of this pot 
because we're gonna make a little bit of a roux gravy in here and we gotta make sure that these meatballs don't fall apart. Basically the texture rolled in the flour is gonna look and feel like cookie dough. It's a big fish cookie. going to disturb them until the bottom starts to cook and solidify so that when I do turn them, they won't fall apart. As I put them in, the meat is kind of displacing this oil a little bit causing it to rise up so that once all my meatballs are in, they should all be sitting in a little bit of oil. Now once this meat is ground, you cannot freeze it. Just ground or it'll get extremely mushy and useless, but you can make the balls and fry them or bake them in the oven a little while until they get solid and then freeze them and they'll keep pretty well. I'm going to leave these undisturbed for a while. I'm going to cover it with a lid so that the heat will trap and start to cook those for a little while so that they're good and solid before I start turning them and fooling them so they don't break apart. All right, it's been cooking for a few minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and check. Yeah, the ones on the bottom are starting to cook, so I can turn these over. Very carefully, like... Start cooking the ones on top. Make sure that every one of them turns so they don't end up with a burnt one. While Tatsi is putting on um, a pot of rice, we're going to go ahead and start to make a little bit of a roux gravy to add to this because the gar isn't going to make that much of a gravy. So basically all I'm going to do is put a little bit of flour in the bottom of the pot, and I'll show you in a second, with some oil or lard and start to brown it. Be very careful, stay with it, stir it because you don't want it to burn. But as soon as the flour starts to brown, I'm going to go ahead and add the rest of my seasonings to it as well and brown that in there and then I'm going to add all of that to the meat and continue to cook it for a while. Alright, I'm using lard, but you can use whatever oil you want. Can't use olive oil for this, there's no way to make this healthy, but we can make it good. Okay. 
all its seasonings and flour left from the pan. That's enough. Yeah. I guess if you need measurements, go for about a half a cup of flour and enough oil to wet it. Turn it into this kind of paste. And just keep stirring it until it turns dark. All right, my meatballs are cooking. They're pretty firm. They're not falling apart. They're ready to start adding some gravy to it. So making my roux, keep it stirred. It's pretty dark. I don't need it very dark for this. So this is good enough. I'm going to go ahead and add my onions and stuff right to the roux. And let all that heat just melt them down. And that's onion, bell pepper, garlic, green onion, and anything else you like. I'm going to just stir this in for a little bit until they're melted. And this is going to make my gravy thick and dark. minutes, not long, two or three minutes at the most, and then add my water. water to cover my meatballs and let them cook. Leave it like this and let it boil, turn my heat back up, let it cook down a little bit, make sure all the meat's cooked and all the flavors are in the gravy. And we'll come back to it in about, probably about 15 minutes. Okay, so basically all we did was continue to let it cook for a while, 
and finished all our sides and we're about to eat but you can see you just let it cook until the gravy gets nice and thick taste it add more seasonings if you want the hot sauce whatever you like and that's basically it now everybody gets to enjoy it this is what our big scary fish turned into good stuff Dear Lord, we thank you for the food that you have provided for us, Lord God. I ask that you would bless it and make it nourish into our bodies. Father, bless the fellowship around about the table, Lord God, as we give you praise each and every day of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Ciao. Amen. Brandon, where's your point? Mm-hmm.